What does a chat in the pub, Braille Scrabble and an old episode of Catalyst have in common? The surprising answer is that they all inspired the creator of a new breed of robot that go about their work in a most feminine way. This is a fembot, a robot programmed to think and work like a woman. According to its maker, the result is far better than traditional male-brained robots. The fembot can juggle many different jobs all at the same time, something that men and most robots find pretty difficult. It's a fundamentally efficient thing to, um, to switch on as many processes as possible in parallel. Peter Hill is the father of the fembots. Surprisingly, he's not a robot expert, he's a molecular physicist who has a knack for inventions. Presently, robots are most suited to high-volume manufacturing, like this car production line. Each robot does one specific task. But Peter had a small factory, and he wanted just one robot to do a whole series of different jobs. And importantly, he wanted it to manage several processes happening at the same time. Some processes might not work first time or may have to be put aside later for someone else to come and fix them up. It gives the, the robot or gives the programmer or the person operating it a much wider variety of things that they can do. But the real breakthrough was the discovery of how little brain power women used. So, how to make a multitasking robot? Inspiration struck when Peter and his family were watching a Catalyst program about the differences between the brains of men and women. This difference in wiring also explains how men and women react to multitasking. It's a source of domestic conflict in most homes. Women have no trouble tackling many things at once, whereas men have to focus on one thing at a time. Instead of a typical man's method of waiting around for a process to finish before launching into another job, Peter wrote a computer program that mimics a woman's approach to work. Yeah, carry on. The fembot constantly runs through its list of tasks, asking itself, what other jobs could I be doing now? The actual robot you see behind us is uh, very much like a person in the kitchen rather than a long linear production line. And while the fembots follow a recipe of sorts, they often vary the order of their tasks to achieve their goal. On. Oh, you've got on. But Peter didn't stop there. He wanted his fembots to have a woman's touch. And not just any woman's. Peter's wife, Fiona, is blind. The efficiency of being able to put something down uh, is very much, I suppose, part of my family environment, with my wife being blind. She can tell where the footpath is by her white cane. She can scan plates, count plates very quickly by just running her finger down it. And so we have beautiful high volume sensory inputs. If Peter could introduce Fiona's sensitive touch to his robots, he'd be creating a cheaper, more flexible way of moving things. Not so hung up about precise positioning as a male robot would be. And that's just what they do. By gently nudging and prodding, the fembots cope with objects in unexpected positions. So the, the robots use something which I, I suppose call soft touch. They tap a tiny little bit just to make sure it's in. They have a, a soft rubber fingers on them which imitate human fingers to push things gently into position. There was now just one thing missing. Peter wanted the fembots to work alongside ordinary people, not just robotics engineers. And again, Peter found inspiration in an unlikely place, the pub. I was actually at the bar getting drinks for 
a dinner and I, I began to listen to the way that people naturally gave instructions, much like a naturalist will look at animals uh, in the wild. Jay, could you do a round of glasses for me, please? Thank you. Listening to pub chat helped Peter develop a new communication system. This makes it easy for humans to control the robots with simple commands that use everyday language. Load fiber on cartridge. Turn that on. Okay. Stand by. There you yes, go. Over there. Okay. It's time to see if I can put a fembot through its paces. Press on button at the front of the controller. Which is that button? This one here. Yes. Yep. Press that. Robot active. Oh, we're in business. <laughs> Peter isn't going to make it easy. He's placed a cartridge in a spot that should be empty. We've laid a trap for we've, it. We've laid a trap. This slot is full. I will place it in the next empty slot. The Fembot is unfazed. It works its way around the unexpected situation. So, say you're serving dessert and the dinner plate's still there, you have to put the dessert down and pick up the dinner plate and remove it. It's sort of one of those oh, domestic, domestic situations there. Um, nice. And, and an important thing about the, Putting that somewhere, yep. And the important thing about the, the problem solving uh, is that um, uh, it allows someone on their yeah. first day oh, yeah. to go a lot further. In the near future, Peter hopes his fembots will begin appearing in small factories all around Australia. Eventually, they may even make their way into our homes. Can it make school lunches as well? Um, well, eventually it will. <laughs> That'll be good. And that's Catalyst for tonight. Coming up next week...